although I am uh, playing with pretty much all the optional roles, still having trouble on that supply one. <laughs> um, part of the reason is the LSUs become a lot less valuable, but there's only a couple of them. Um, and I just don't know if I see that much advantage. I definitely see a difference, and I should really make my mind up. But I'm actually starting. Um, there's no night bombardment, no no capability yet. Supplies, everything starts in supply first turn. Ground unit reorganized. There are no partial strength units on the board. Uh, guerrilla attacks, nobody's in a position to launch one. So I'm not going to even go look those rules back up and see, is there something I want to do? Uh, my understanding with those, though, is you need to have uh, an insurgency unit um, with, uh, you know, adjacent to some facility that I could attack. Uh, and we're not in that position right now. And that puts us uh, to the ground unit regular movement. And this is for the communists. And boom, let's start moving some pieces. <laughs> God. Yeah, I feel kind of blind in terms of, like, oh, what am I trying to do? But I'm trying to overwhelm Honduras, you know? And let's see. Maybe Costa Rica. Costa Rica is a cheap country to take to conquer. That's one of my victory conditions, if I recall correctly. I'm having some troubles, as always, trying to figure out how do I cope with all this crap, right? Well, whatever. But I know one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to be marching into Honduras. So I can delay things by saying, let's roll on the world tensions table. And this is going to be the B table because we're entering, uh, we're going to be going totally within an allied country for the first time. Uh, so on a four, five, or six, we cause some world tension increases. And this may allow the U.S. to um, up their intervention for free eventually but yeah, the problem of course is I probably want to get those US air units down here quicker um, I'm not sure there's much if I'm not planning on ground intervention I'm not sure that there's much chance of getting it to the bad places I get a five that's gonna be pumping it up one and again you know I mean the political rules to this game are so limited um, and that's that's where I'm most interested but they put fairly detailed rules for the US intervention quality but nothing for the hearts and minds quality again though uh, this is more of an operational than a strategic design uh, which whatever uh, that just is less appealing to me Here's a few units moving into place. Now, attack helicopters, I'm trying to remember when they launch. Um, I think they launch in the air missions phase rather than in the ground unit phase. So, even though they look like ground units. Um, but yeah, we've pushed in. Actually, we haven't officially crossed the border yet. We're still on border hexes. Uh, I know I'm going to, though, so the hell with it. Um, that's why I wanted to do it ahead of time. But. Mm -hmm. Rotating units so that it's obvious what I've moved. Uh, talking ad infinitum so that I can try to avoid moving more pieces. <laughs> All right. What I have to do is I have to check each hex that I'm entering. Make sure it's not a victory point hex, right? Now villages are okay again, but I have to look for any of this other stuff whether or not it's there. Oy. Aspects of this that are like your big conventional World War II type uh, war game. Yeah, I haven't moved another piece. I started looking, and it's hard, you know. Um, here, I've got a nice little lever. I can get in there. I can get really good odds and smash in there. Great. <laughs> you know? But how good in odds? How much strength do I really need? How much of a risk am I willing to take? And, you know, where? Do, what do I want to do in terms of positioning armor? Do I want to grab things with a, an exploitation movement, the reserve, essentially? Um how do I attack the line, you know? I mean, I should start over at the edges. I did over here. Now I'm looking at the center and I'm like, wow, these two units are kind of painful. Do I want to swing around? What do I want to do? 
it's got all that complexity in it. And that's not a complexity I terribly enjoy. Uh, maybe I enjoy it more once I'm into the game, but it always is uh, that first turn expense, you know, in almost all cases. It's like, yep, I'm going to do the big attack, right? Uh, you know, almost all the pieces are moving and doing something on that first turn. Um, that doesn't happen in the smaller scenarios, but it definitely happens in a lot of war games where, you know, everybody's set up and ready for the war and they have the most pieces and the most capabilities and then, you know, as things get degraded, you've also learned more about the system and how how the mechan mechanisms work in this particular scenario and everything. And yes, I've played around with the mechanisms. I understand kind of how they work. Um, but it was different circumstances. And any of the scenarios are gonna be kind of like this. Of course, the fact that I'm at level four might mean something where I don't wanna delay and build up units or anything. I'm just ready to smack in. Um, so that part might be my fault rather than taking a different scenario, but uh, <sighs> it's a cost I hate, <laughs> you know? I just hate it. Especially with the different movement point costs for uh, armored and infantry units, eh, all kind of stuff like that. It just kind of gets you the, oh boy, drudge of a conventional war game type of feel. The answer after moving three units is, it's time for a break. feel these kinds of extraordinary steps of moving a few pieces and walking away for an hour is what's necessary to cope with the game to get to be able to press forward now i've managed to launch attack you know to set up my attacks across here as well that's another little piece what's the next one the next one's starting to deal uh either with reserves moving up or what do i do about you know things like the fdn i'm overmatched down there uh, that's just the truth. I'm not going to be able to cross the border facing those things. Um, the decision on Costa Rica. The decision on, do I have to defend interior spaces, you know? Uh, or can I count on my interception capability, to the air cover, to provide me with safety? Uh, this is the problem the communists face, is because they go first in the turn, their air units, uh, if they use them <laughs> to support their attacks, this is the nature of the I go, you go without like, um, with a joint end of turn stage that recuperates everything, uh, that they kind of have no initiative in the air. They have to have double the force. They have to have some of the force uh, prepared to provide them with air support and some of it providing um, air defense because even if I strip off all the enemy interceptors if I don't have any interceptors left and use you know if I'm flying air support uh, escorts with mine uh, I've got a problem right <laughs> because they can fly un uninterceptable missions uh, so they don't have to put escorts on them. Um, I guess to some of my advantages, it looks like I have more planes, but not enough more yet. That'll change. That'll change up until the U.S. starts throwing carrier groups in and stuff, at which point mm, the world changes again. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Anyway, I feel like when I do put this much effort into something uh, where I'm doing things kind of piecemeal, I kind of have to point that out. I kind of have to show it up and showcase it because um, the alternative is really, you know, oh God, I can't handle this. And just, that's it, clean it up. And I know some people do that. Uh, I know I do that sometimes <laughs> with games. This one I know I can handle and I know I can move forward on it. I just wish. I had better table seating situation. This thing's so flimsy. Of course, so is my one up in the loft. Uh, and my good table is too heavy to get up in the loft. And it's down in a room that I can't really talk loudly in.
So it puts this one to shame in terms of clutter uh, because I have not been able to get a carpenter <laughs> because I'm incapable of arranging for people to do work at my place, apparently. Um, you know, I try contacting them, I tell them I want to be contacted by email, and all they want to do is telephone me, and I know my phone will not allow them to contact me, so, you know, <laughs> that's life. Decisions, um, falling back along here, and over here moving in place to handle Arda. Again, this has to do with the setup order. I don't know where Arda was when I set up, so I set up to do an invasion. I don't know if I'm going to do that. It basically comes down to whether these guys, six to three, two to one. Sounds like I can probably take Liberia, and uh, I don't know uh, what causes conquest of a nation. <laughs> But there's not much other than Liberia here. There's an airport which I'll be walking through and capturing, and that's about it. So I think I'll get the conquest of Costa Rica fairly easily. Remember, nothing's coming from the south, so this is a safe move. It will cause another chance. Let's do it. One, two, three, four. Uh, we roll on the B table again. We've just invaded Costa Rica. I'm tracking these, if I can, somewhere under here. Uh, I'm tracking these on this clipboard. I have the Honduran invasion. I'm invading Costa Rica now. A three, that I'm safe. That doesn't cause me a problem. Something new, give me some more force against Arda here. I'm going to do boat transport here and drop... It's within five hexes of that, and I can drop it anywhere within five hexes of it. Oh, where do I want to put it? I don't know for sure. I'll just put it over here. I think I finished my ground movement with the FSLN. Um, reinforcements coming up this way. I got some armored reserve in place up there, ready, not just to break through, but if I take losses on units, I might end up not having anti-air capabilities, and I can reserve my way up into there to gain them, uh, to gain that capability. Uh, what does that mean I still have? Well, I still have these femlins here, which are all insurgency. So I can declare ground unit movement done and go to the insurgency movement phase. And that's kind of cool. <laughs> I've made it through, you know, a real phase in a real scenario of this. Time to pat myself on the back or something, right? <laughs> I don't know. All right. Spent a couple more minutes looking at the map, trying with the rules, trying to figure out what I might want to can do with my insurgency units for the communists. Right now, all I have is these. Um, there's not much they can do, and they've got kind of a problem. They are not within the Messiah uh, EW radius, which means if I create insurgents, and I have a fair number of these guys that I can create, uh, I'll probably get counterinsurged by air power. Um, do I want to take that air power away from the defenders? What do I want to do? I don't know. You know, <laughs> this is what I hate about these kind of, um, I do this. Are you going to do something to counteract that type systems? Um, and this is really the meat of the VG, uh, Gulf Strike system, the fleet system. It's all this kind of... And, and it's why I avoided the SS-20 scenario, to be honest. It, it's all this, I'm doing this to get you to commit this, you know, <laughs> to get you to play this piece. Um, it's the kind of 
uh, situation that fits in with certain kind of CDGs. Some of the more stripped down ones have nothing more than that. I'm thinking 13 days here. Uh, in a sense, it's what Go does, but the difference with Go is I put this here, are you going to counter that? You have to choose your location to counter it, and there's sort of a map presence, and I can imagine something going on with it. With these, it's just, well, I'm activating this air unit while I'm countering you. Okay, maybe I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. You know, <laughs> kind of thing. Um, where there's nothing really present that I'm seeing change on the map. I'm not seeing the front lines move, and honestly... When I've got insurgencies, there, you know, there really aren't front lines in an insurgency operation. Again, part of my problem with coping with these kind of, with, with the insurgency side of the game. So there's two directions this is coming at me to hit my weaknesses and make me not like it. Um, on the other hand, I feel like I have impunity to create um, FSLN insurgent units within Nicaragua. <laughs> or at least within the Messiah range. Um, I don't have any such units to move, and conceivably, if I can get some air power into sufficient range here. Now, I don't have AWACS, so I don't have that 10 hex range or anything like that. I've got to get to an airfield within three of where I'm building the insurgencies, and get some EW in there and everything like that. That's not the case right now to be able to fully support these. Now, there are scenarios where, like, you know, you're handling the El Salvador Revolution, where pretty much all you're doing is the insurgencies. But that means, you know, those are the insurgency points I have. I use them, I trigger the air support, like I did in the, uh, in the garden, in the fall of Somoza scenario. Um, you can overwhelm the capacity to inhibit insurgency placement by spending a lot of points and throwing a lot of them down. But that doesn't seem to be necessary. I'm able to put useful FSLN insurgencies, and it's all one set of points. It's all this big pile of points right here that I'm using, and I'll get reinforcements for that as well for several turns where these question marks are. Some of those happen. Uh, so I kind of don't want to do anything with these insurgents. Um, other options, I can move forward and try to, you know, uh, damage airfields or something like that. There's no airfield there, or there's no air units there. There's one here, but that would expose my units. Um, right now, they're sitting inside entrenchments. That gives them a benefit defensively. They're all stacked together. <sighs> they're in pretty good shape. Uh, El Salvador, of course, has its full weight that it can bring to bear against them, which is the other side of the factor that, like, yeah, I could perhaps bring enough forces to destroy an entrenchment. Well, I'm not sure throwing more insurgents... Throwing more insurgents down would help, because if like put them, like, here, well, that means I can't attack from this hex unless I'm also attacking this location, and stuff like that. And... That's advantageous, obviously, but it also, you know, just complicates the calculations in a sense. If I can bring overwhelming force into play, I can bring overwhelming force into play, you know. Okay, well, I fill up these two hexes to attack this, and I use some soak off down here and deal with it. Um, but other than that, yeah, I'm kind of of the position of, I'm going to use my insurgency points to bring them in under air cover. I've got quite a few, and I'm going to use them as supplements to my ground combat units to get the bonuses. And I may be creating them right in zones of control and such not where I can afford them. Now, I have to worry about stacking situations. So, like, these guys are only one stacking point, apparently, because there's four of them there. They're just, uh, they're just battalions. But i got to look because I know that there are brigades and stuff as well among these, are there not? Mm. Well, these all seem to be battalion or company size, so yeah, I sh should be able to. I say to myself, so, uh, but now battalion, oh no, that's load point. Battalions have two stacking points. 
these were instructed to be stacked this way and they're actually illegally uh, set up and okay these are legal I've got two four five I don't know what to do about that because they were instructed to be set up on those entrenchments and that's not legitimate as far as I can tell by the rules oh found the roll that I needed. Uh, this would have been helpful back in the Samosa game. Uh, insurgency units are support units for stacking purposes. Again, there's so many little things like that. that <laughs> uh, but yeah, I found, I looked here and I'm like, yeah, they're deployed um, specifically for insurgency infantry battalions. Infantry battalions have a stacking of two. Uh, you know, <laughs> so so painful uh, to have so many different little special rules that are covered there. It would be kind of useful, although the counters are fairly crowded, to have a stacking value and to have it associated with the load value or something like that. But it's not. Um, it's not at all. So, for example, a support unit like that battalion has one stacking point, but it's a battalion for load with two uh, two load points, um, you know, and and it's just <laughs> that's the way the game is, you know, <laughs> uh, and it kind of makes sense because they're not in a formed unit, so I don't know, maybe they're dispersed over other hexes or something. Who knows? Anyway. Um, I'm going to say I'm done with insurgency movement by not doing any, because what the hell. <laughs> but now we get to the insurgency placement phase, and here's where things get ugly, because again, I can put a lot of S FSLN uh, insurgency units on the board. And I don't think that um, I want to waste air power to try to prevent them from being created within interception range. Again, it's a call. Uh, I put the first one up there. If a counterinsurgency goes up, you know, um, that comes at a cost. And one of the big questions is, defensively, air power is not that effective. <laughs> Other than as a means to prevent offensive air power. Uh, so by intercepting or whatever. Which means, you know... Let's see, I got these 1S, AC-47s, etc. But I got these big stacks of air units, and I just don't want to fucking cope with them. <laughs> I gotta tell you, that's so much of this game, is I just don't want to cope with it. Next step, then, with the insurgency placement, is I pick some units out that I probably want to place. And uh, a bunch of the FSLN units, um, and some special forces, because special forces are awesome. Now, my border is here, and I've got attacks across there, so I've actually got some advantages in terms of being able to drop insurgency units right in the hex so that I can attack uh, without getting any air issues. And here's the thing. Even if I wanted to place somewhere like here, uh, these are Cubans. They're going to have uh, uh, anti-air capability which might be a reason to say, well, screw it, I'll take a chance with that. Um, but, of course, because of the game that it is, each nationality has its own rules on where its insurgents can be placed. Again, not a big deal in, like, the Samosa scenario. You look it up once, and you know it. But here, you got to look it up multiple times, probably. And here we're going to look... I'm going to show it. Insurgency placement. It's in the index. Most things are. With one, two, three, four, five different numbers. <laughs> five different rules uh, references. Now, I know where the most likely one is, is over on the C40. But I have to look at the intervention game ones because I haven't fully glommed that. So this is going to tell me presumably where I can place them. Okay, so here's the important thing is, uh, I guess, the home country. No. Uh, okay. Well, 
So my big question is, I don't think I have many Soviet regular infantry units on the board. I have a Soviet engineer down here. I can probably place a, an insurgent. Um, and that 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 is probably the limitation. It has to probably be that unit and only that unit. Although, wait a minute, this is no, that's Cuban. It's sometimes hard to tell them apart. Um, but I think that's the case. And then I also have to look up the insurgency rules, which. I'm sorry, the intervention rules, which we turn back to, we throw a pen in here so we can find our place, and we go back here, and it's just such a painful, painful game to deal with everything, uh, I2 and I4, let's see, I mean, yes, it's my own, re uh, the numbers on there are the page number, and then it tells you whether it's left or center. So I2, okay, this has the insurgency placement listed there. I4 has it listed again over here. Again, you know, did I really need a reference to where in the sequence of play it is? <sighs> there are probably other things that are in here that I'm not covering because I do remember some special rules about it. Um, okay, so who gets to place them? That's the problem. Each hex containing... The player must have command points. The friendly unit can place it. Uh, it doesn't seem to be nationality. No. It can be used to place new insurgency units of the same nationality on the map. Now, all that said... There might be special rules that, so I have to kind of hunt through here. Now I know it's pretty safe in most places, although I'll shift through this just to make sure. Um, okay, the, the Soviets do not have a home. No, the Soviets are a home country in Nicaragua, which means I get bonuses if I build them in Nicaragua. Well. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Uh, but, and let me just cut through this. Communists, okay, here we go. All communist regular and insurgency ground units can try to create any other communist insurgency unit. They're all considered one nationality. Well, that's, the allied player must use units of the faction. So this is weird. So I can create the Soviet unit with any of my units that... Hmm. Well, that's odd. <laughs> okay. That's the thing I was looking for, honestly. And what's the chance that I find that? Well, only because it's kind of in the back of my head. All right. Now I'll try to figure out what I want to place them. And again, I'm not going to interfere with any of them as long as they're within the Messiah range. Because I don't want to do anything hard. <laughs> Uh, notable failures with my special forces units. You can see I dropped down more than 10 tries on them, actually. Uh, and we've got a few on the board. Some of them are visible. A couple of them are hiding under things like a stelly, where I just wanted to make sure I had some additional uh, forces in play there. We're not going to do allied counterinsurgency because uh, we put them all... Oh! No, we didn't. Shit, shit, shit. Hold on. Um... This was in a town. Oh no, it didn't get a town bonus. Huh, I think I gave it a town bonus. Let me put this one in a town somewhere. Let's put it there, um, just because. Okay. Uh, I really wanted to get some up here, but I can't afford the counterinsurgency um, impacts. I do not have an air base here, I don't think so. Yeah, there's not much I can do about it. Um, so yeah, I'm holding off on that, and that puts me into first insurgency disbandment. Well, I just placed them. I'm not going to do that. And now at air missions. And oh crap! <laughs> now we come to the game that is very much like Gulf Strike and like the fleet games, where uh, except instead of a bunch of, um, in general, in in Gulf Strike. Um, 
you have no more than like four air units at a base from what I recall I don't really remember on fleet I assume carriers have big forces on them but maybe not as many counters as they do here but here man I just have so many big stacks and then they're also kind of spread uh, hidden under counters and stuff there because the hexes aren't big enough to hold all the all the counters that you want in the hex you know somebody was actually mentioning about blowing up maps this might not be a bad choice to do so if it was a good game <laughs> But it's just not a good enough game to be worth uh, that, at least in my opinion. Um, some people might be like, oh, yeah, I would like to really play this again. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I don't know how I'm going to get through this fucker, you know? I'm, I'm just, I'm having such a hard time getting through a turn, basically, uh, where I'm like, eh, it's taken me the whole, it's taken me pretty if you count the intervention rules reading them to you aloud for whatever reason it has taken me two whole days to get to here to the point where i can play this um i had the game mostly set up for today and it has taken me a whole day to get through part of one player turn and it's not like oh my god it's that hard a game to play it's that hard a game to come face it's like uh vietnam i just I just feel demoralized every time I start fiddling with it. In terms of projecting air power, the first thing I want to understand is what the hell's up with these guys. They might be transferring to the map now or during the reinforcement phase, I don't know which, but they can't do any missions this turn other than coming on the board, so I don't have to actually understand that first. So let's go to what I was going to say. And yeah, I couldn't fall asleep. Uh, I got work tomorrow in a few hours, but... Uh, long weekend screwed with my timing. It's, I mean, I'm off and up in the middle of the night, so it's just, uh, I was hoping to get on a better schedule where I don't have to take naps. So, Honduras has an EW unit here and another air group here. They're within range of each other, which means my EW group, um, can defend these couple of hexes. So if I'm going to do some sort of air mission against those hexes, I should decide that right away. Um, I'm pretty free to conduct air missions here and here with impunity. And obviously, if I can want to drop anything on that Arda attack. Um, I've got pretty good odds here already, so I might not want to launch an air mission, but I might want to launch one. <laughs> now, here's the problem. If I do launch one, and the Hondurans don't react, what are they going to do with their air points? Well, there's not a whole lot they can do. Um, they can bomb uh, facilities. And that's about it. Other possibilities would be to launch an air attack on the air base right now if i get a good air bomb bar now one of the problems is there's an anti-aircraft gun there so uh, without standoff attacks etc i'd rather clear the air base with land units than uh, attack it directly but if i wanted to do that i could try to attack the sam aa um, and you know I could get a hit on it fairly easily. Now, what does this mean? Well, the non-mobiles, I have to get a D attack uh, to damage them. And then it probably wouldn't be repaired. And this is, you know, it's realistic. You have all these kind of options. What do I want to do? Yeah. <laughs> I kind of uh, am drawn more at this point towards games where... Things are a little bit more abstract than they are in these, where I'm not trying to, you know, force the enemy by committing a mission against his AA or against his airport to, you know, uh, scramble some jets to fight me. But on the other hand, again, I can probably get some pretty good attack 
without, I mean, there's no real reaction. So we're looking at two, four, five strength points there. We have two, I don't know, I can't read. Two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we have two to one. Um, I'm not going to be able to slip anything much in there because, again, it's in the air range. You know? So I can't, like, transport helicopter or something in there. I can't, uh... I can't bring uh, an attack helicopter in to get some additional fighting ca capability. There's just, you know. But again, I'm also facing, let's see, modifiers. I don't know, does a village give me something? Is that a village? <laughs> yeah, I think a village gives me a modifier. Nope, it's town, city, or port. Yeah, villages are kind of unimportant in this game. Uh, so, you know, I'd be at like 2 to 1 at even. <laughs> Doesn't seem like very great, but, um, so I think I do want to get oh, air power in there. So, what do I do about that air power? Well, things are open. So I can look at air group 5 and what's in it. And... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to launch a bomber for close air support and some fighters. And i got to find them. Uh, let's see, I've got air groups 1, 2, and 3. Shit, I dropped a unit. There's two. Well, you got to paw through everything. You know, one way or another, you're not going to have what you need on top. There's one, where's three? Three's here. So I could actually create a huge fighter squadron to protect them. <laughs> and basically challenge Honduras, you know, do you want to prevent me? Or I could use a smaller one and hope to attrition them. Because I got more planes coming in, of course. The U.S. is probably coming in, too. Oh... Uh, I think I'm going to go with the huge force, uh, but then I want to look here and see what's going on with this attack, because this one could also be done. Ah, oh, shit. Three, six, seven. Thirteen. To two, four. Six. So again, two to one. Uh... Probably a shift in both directions. Ugh. Oh, crappies. Uh, which means now I want to use half my air force um, in terms of defense. And I probably need to get firepower into these hexes. Three, six, seven. Although these are more powerful. 10, 13, 14. To four. Now it's in a city, which makes life hard. Fourteen to four means I've got three to one in the rough. It's going to put me here. There's going to be modifiers against me, but um, I can probably get other factors into play there, like an attack helicopter over there. Uh, other options are what's up here. This one has to be attacked too. I mean, it doesn't have to be. 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I don't have an engineer here, and I'm going across to a river. But I've got huge odds. So that might not be as important. Do I have another? I have more attack helicopters in play. <laughs> and of course, if I strip all the Honduran planes, then I can throw attack helicopters into these fights. Okay, so the brain keeps swirling around, and I'm, you know, this is like life. Uh, you're facing all these decisions, and you gotta make one. And which one do you want to make? You know, and why? Ah, uh, damned if I know. Alright, so I think what I need to do is I need to launch two 
heavily protected air columns. Now I'll launch the first one, see what the Hondurans do. The most they can send up against me is, these are both airports, so that's like eight planes. There's a lot of planes. Uh, eight planes. Um, and depending on what they have, they might want to be reserving planes to intercept another fight. So let's see what they do have. Okay, we have to be able to read here. This is a 1S. That could conceivably intercept if nothing's fast. This is a 2J. This is from group 6, which is the one up here. Okay. Uh, so 1S. Okay, this is a D. That's not going to help. A D. That's not going to help. A D. That's not going to help. So what I have is... Wait, is that a D or an S? That looks like a D. It's an AC-47 bomber, not a 37. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, there's a couple of slow fighters and a jet there. And here there's an EW, which could go with the fight. And that gives benefits, but um, there may also be benefits for being within range of my EW. Okay, and some F-15, a D, a D, a slow, a slow A-37, a bunch of A-37s here, um, some Ds. So, yeah, we have a couple of jets and a bunch of other stuff. Now, chances are my bombers are going to have to be slow planes, but now I look through all my um, Nicaraguan planes and see what their, uh, you know, what their setup is, because if I can get good bombing and they're under jets, I could actually say they're all escorts if I get intercepted and fight a counter air mission. Um, again, if this was the f uh, Gulf Strike, and if I recall correctly in fleet, I'd have like some little marker under there that tells me what the mission is. So I had to make that guess ahead of time. And that makes it a less playable game solitaire. This one theoretically should be easy to do solitaire, but it wouldn't be easy to do under any conditions, I have to say. As to what Nicaragua has, first of all, I have a bunch of MiGs. MiGs are pretty damn good. The MiG-21s have bomber capability, so they could be kind of um, sandbaggers. You know, I can throw them in there and be using them with a, well, I can either bomb or air superiority. Um, I have these S-24s, which could also be, they're jets with decent bombing capability, two points. Um, a two-point bomb is all I need to drop to get a plus two close air support. That's pretty fucking good. I don't think there are any threes here. Uh... My slow planes, I'll probably save them for where I'm not going to be able to be intercepted. Uh, and get air support with that. I got some more MiG-21s up here. And then a slow plane. And I've got a fair amount of EW present. I think I can build myself something that can handle whatever Honduras could throw in my way. Um, now, if I do that, this Honduras inter intercept or not? Do they just let me in there? That's a good question. <laughs> Consider whether I'm going to keep back uh, any counterinsurgency capabilities. Do I have anything that's good at them? Yeah, this is worth two of the three towards a counterinsurgency. Uh, these guys suck. This is worth two. Uh, no, these are worth one each. I'm sorry, they're bees, right? Right, 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 right. Uh, A's are double, B's are single, C's are half, yeah. Um, I don't think I have any A's there. I do have counterinsurgency with my attack helicopters. If I use them in combat, I won't be able to use them for counterinsurgency. And what that means is, <laughs> is that uh, 
you know, shit like this can counter, can drop some insurgency units on me, which are going to be annoying, but that's life, right? I mean, my main fight is over here. And again, it's like this tangled mess of spaghetti that, or a knot that I have to unthread to figure out what the fuck I want to do. And it's just... It's just too much, and it's why I, I've stayed away from uh, doing further OCS games, to tell you the truth, because, um, what is it, Blitzkrieg Legend or whatever, I don't, I don't know which one it is, it, it, it's whatever uh, the attack into France is, which is sort of the first one chronologically that I have, and ever since that's come out, it's been sitting there like a block saying, you don't want to do this. Now, part of me, of course, says, screw that, I'll just do DAC, I really want to do DAC, <laughs> and I probably will at some point, but whenever you have something to inhibit a decision, it's very easy not to make that decision and to keep doing other things when there's lots of other choices. Right, just to explain why DAC has not gotten played when it's been like this aching in my loins for a decade. <laughs> okay. So what the fuck am I doing? I don't fucking know. <laughs> um, and, you know, I mean, honestly, there's a reason that military planning is an actual job. And, you know, people would be plotting this out using the intelligence, etc., and would spend days on this decision probably <laughs> and I spend days avoiding the decision instead of making it uh, but this is what this game is like this is what you have to deal with you know um, where you just have such a massive level of different choices that you you can do anyway I'll make one I'll throw some dice and we'll get there that bold decision, I realize, well, I still have to take into account where the planes come from. So, uh, Air Base 1 is Punta Huete. I can bring six planes from there, so I think I'm okay. But I have to make sure that I'm not taking more than four from any of the other bases. And again, how much do I want to send for this? Well, I want to send enough, since I'm using jets, to deal with the two jet planes that could intercept me. And I want to make it absolutely clear that they can't afford to. Why? Mm, I don't know. The air mission that I um, am sending in, it's an S-24 that I'm intending to bomb with, with jet capability. Oh, this thing better be jet. Yeah, this is a zero J goal. Um, a couple of MiG-19s, that's my real fighter cover. I'm throwing a MiG-21 with it too, which is even stronger. The neat thing with the MiG-21 20, uh, is that that has the capability to bomb as well. However, <laughs> a one-point bombardment doesn't do me shit. So, I'm kind of wasting that by sending it. Um, would I be better off sending something else? I don't know. I made my fucking decision. And now part of me has to kind of remember where they came from. They don't have to go back where they came from, but I did have them deployed uh, with some thought and some counting. And now that I've scrambled planes from different locations, I may have trouble putting together, if I had a clever setup, as clever a setup. And we gather and wherever we go and head up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we're in range we can be intercepted now. Now, I know what size this is. I say screw it. This hits here, and it's going to drop that plus two air support. And really, uh, oh, do I have anti-air here? That's a good question. I don't think Condorans do, but if they do, i got to go look that up the battery swap because this thing sucks so bad um the net effect of all that work is to put a plus two marker here and there's no anti-air um and now the communists fly back because there was no interception <laughs> because 
because I'm a chicken. Um, no, I mean, I, I was so heavily outnumbered, he used up a lot of his power. And now these go back. Now, where do they go? Well, they could go to any of these airports. Let me see if I can try to figure out where I took them from, because that'll make me happier if I'm putting them in the same place. I'm pretty sure I put this here, so that goes in the used box there. Uh, the MiG-21. Oh, where it came from. Let's put it here. Uh, the MiG-19s. Hmm. Actually, I think the MiG-21 may have been here. I don't know. Do I have MiG-21s I have MiG over there? Yeah, I think the MiG-21 was here. Let's put the MiG-19s down here. And let's put the... This thing. One, two, three, four... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11. That sounds like a lot. 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, let's send that there. We're going to get all mixed up. These are not where they were before, and I'm not getting uh, that set up. That's that. Now, I got more jets. I'm going to try the same thing and drop a bonus uh, on this one. I'm a little clever. I pulled my planes down here below the thing. Uh, in case I want to get them all to go back to where they came from. Um, again, ignored. I sent a little less in terms of fighter power over, but dropped another plus two there. Okay, now things are easier because I've got places where I don't really care. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of bombardment capability. But I have these slow planes. Let's look. What else do we have? Um, those are good at counterinsurgency comparatively. The MiGs are great at interception. So I kind of don't want to give them up. I may need them in case Honduras tries to bomb me. So keeping a couple of them. Keeping obviously the EW plane. Uh, the Y-28 doesn't serve me any purpose whatsoever here. So, let's keep these MiG-21s and the EW there. That means I basically have uh, some plus ones that I could drop. I am going to send this and this. And drop a couple of plus ones. Huh. Well, we ended up with less capability here. Uh, here and here. These are outside of range of anything that can intercept. Well, now, wait a minute. Maybe not. I got Air Group 8 here. What the fuck's in Air Group 8? Nothing that can hurt me. <laughs> a bunch of... A bunch of... Uh, uh, FDN or whatever um, planes. Great. I thought I was safe, but <laughs> I wanted to make sure. All right. So that's a big part of my air phase taken care of there. I've gotten my close air support out of the way. Uh, now I can focus on do I want to do other things? You know, do I want to do a transport mission? Well, I don't know. <laughs> what am I doing with this thing? Is there somewhere I want to shift him to that would be incredibly valuable? I don't know. So I am going to stop again, possibly for the night, in the midst of my air missions phase. <laughs> because that's how this game goes. I mean, the level of pain that I'm going through here, I, I want to express, just so you see what kind of shit you have to go through to f get your way through a turn in one of the big scenarios. How many turns am I going to do? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Missions phase, about 20 hours in between. <laughs> I work, nap, <laughs> did some other stuff, whatever. I don't know, maybe not that long. Um, so what have I done? I moved a couple of helicopters, attack helicopters, into the combats uh, that I'm going to do. Um, technically, they should be shifted 90 degrees, I think, at this point. Um... Although they haven't committed their mission yet. It should be clear from there. Uh, what else do I want to do? Well, obviously I don't want to get in under uh, 
the EW range where I can be intercepted by stuff, which is why the helicopters went in where they did. Uh, I think what else I want to do is I have a couple of things I can move. I have a helicopter that could transport, um, so I have a couple of helicopters that could transport a battalion, I think it is. I hope it is, because that's only two, yeah, um, two transport points. I can pick that up and move that into one of these two attacks, uh, get some insurgency support for it, which remember is a plus one, it's not a special forces unit, pity that, and also uh, an extra strength point. And then I've got these Cuban paratroopers that I can drop. I think they can only go in clear and rough though which means I could drop them here safely, or here, which would allow them to attack that hex, but I can't use them here where I think I could use the strength. I don't really know if I need the strength points up here, to tell you the truth. Uh, which might mean, hold on a little, uh, or look to see, hey, is there some kind of uh, real defect in the enemy positions. Getting four extra strength points into an attack makes sense, but I don't know if it's worth dropping things into a zone of control, which could risk them. Uh, I could also just drop them closer where they'd be able to react, but I'd rather keep them uh, in reserve if that's the case. So I've got to check the paratroop and helicopter assault because I'm dropping that into there. I'm not sure if putting a helicopter into a zone of control requires a roll. Uh, and unfortunately, this doesn't tell what's required or what's not, so it's time for a rolls lookup. I do want to make this assault, uh, this added assault, because I've only got like a 3 to 1 attack there. This drop brings it up to 4 to 1 and gives me the plus 1 bonus, which seems pretty good. To roll. Uh, I don't get the penalty for assault into a space with enemy units though, so I roll a die and we'll see uh, what's the combined defense value of enemy units. Oh, shit. Man, look at that. I think it's four. Um, I don't think they get the bonus from being in a city. Wouldn't really make a lot of sense. I think. I don't know. So four, that means on a five or a six we take some kind of damage, which would suck. And of course we do. The transported units take one step loss. Transported helicopters uh, performing helicopter assault take a total of one step loss. Okay, so yeah, I got hurt. I spend five radius to move all the way back here. I can't even pick up that unit. I don't know what I'm up to, but whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a damaged helicopter, I'm not going to be able to repair it, and I'm just in bad shape there. I don't think I have any other air missions there. Um, Allied Reaction Air Mission, that's for the U.S. Marine Corps and such. Not, this is not something, notice, this isn't something that the, um, uh, that the U.S. turn has in it. So that brings me to ground combat, which should be pretty easy. But <laughs> looking up a couple of rules is kind of fatiguing. Yeah, I'm just making excuses here. I actually have to poop. A few minutes of looking at the rules to figure out. And again, I want to give you the whole experience of play, right? At least vicariously. <laughs> and there's so many rules in this. Um, and that it, it becomes sort of a lifestyle type game, you know? <laughs> I mean without that broad, exciting scope of a, 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 of a, a world at war or something of, of that kind of level where you're like, okay, I can deal with there being a huge amount of rules. Although, honestly, I think this is more nitpicky feeling. Um, it feels like there's more special cases, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, there are. <laughs> yeah, there are. Um, maybe about the same number of words, though, which is a frightening thing because... Both games um, have a wordiness problem in various ways. Uh, but anyway, what I needed to look up was I got this big stack of reinforcing air units. And I knew some air units come on the board. Uh, 
notably uh, US planes as they're flying in. But I look at this and all it says really is that these planes fly on and you roll a die to see what you actually get. Um, well, I found where it is. Uh, after looking at all the different options in the conventional game, I found some place that tells me, well, actually, maybe I haven't looked at all the different places yet. I stopped when I found a possible answer, which is that there's a little star. Some scenarios allow Soviet and Cuban mid-air units to appear as reinforcements. I guess they just appear on the map. They don't have to fly in. Uh, I guess they come packaged in boxes or something. I have no idea. Um, but let's take a look at what the other I-16R, that looks like the U.S. follow-up and nothing more than that. But again, am I sure... Pretty sure. And for some strange reason, this is I-16R. Other things I'll say I-16C for this column. Um, there's two columns on each. Uh, usually R would be on the odd numbers. Just as, yeah, I think this is just for U.S. stuff. So, I don't see anything about Soviet. Oh, area that's coming in. <sighs> it's so fucking hard to, to commit to, you know, doing the action. But let's do the ground combat, I guess, because we know how to do that. And I'll just report on that. You've seen it in the other scenarios. Oh, well, there are more modifiers here, so let's do one of them. Uh, let's do this interesting one over here because it's got air units and all kind of other stuff. Nothing to pull you aside. So what do we have? We have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, nothing. 14, the Poochie map. I hate using plexiglass, not just because it's got some glare, it's got some hovering. Um, it prevents me from touching the map or from staining it, uh, but <laughs> uh, my, my plexiglass is shit because I generally don't need it. But with these Victory Games games, I probably should have it on there. It's too late with all these counters. So what the hell was my number again? Um, I have four here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 to 4. 15 to 4 sounds like a 3 to 1 base. We're in the rough. Okay. And now let's find us one of these booklets, which we haven't had to use much here. But we have to kind of work our way through because we've got more here than usual. Uh, did we cross a river? Not here. We're going to have that penalty here. That's going to be, um, I think, a minus 2 to the die roll because they don't say die rolls, but... They say die rolls and column shifts, but column shifts are specified. Uh, fortification or entrenchment? Yeah. Uh, no. A city town report. So we've got a minus one. I gotta find my die. There it is. Okay. So I've got one on the defender's side there. An insurgency unit in the defender's forces? No. Each bombardment point delivered by uh, close air support, that cancels this out. There's an insurgency unit in the attackers. It doesn't add any strength, but that gives me plus one to the attack. Now we keep looking. Uh, there's no rain. I don't know when I'm going to start rolling for uh, for weather. Uh, I figure we're like maybe three to five turns in or something. I don't know. Um, there's nothing in the scenario, you know, these design your own or roll your own scenarios that do anything. None of that. So cluster, uh, so column shifts. Yeah, cluster fucks. Uh, the attacker has an artillery, yes. That's one column shift. These I have a marker for. Uh, no engineer, no, I've got an engineer. That's another column shift. I have special forces, no. Tank, I don't think so. Attack helicopter is doing ground support. Yeah, maybe we threw too much in. Uh, friendly EW unit within three hexes of the allied unit. That has to be a ground unit, so no uh, CIA EW. Yeah, why isn't that the same as the other? Smart bombs. Right, okay. So we're way over on the top chart with a plus one. We're going to do some damage. It's just how much. 
and it's a city, so all retreats can be ignored. And we roll a five, that's a six. We do two hits. Uh, hmm. I don't know. <laughs> you know? Um, I get to... Oh, wait. This is actually stronger unit. Hold on. Uh, what did I say? It's 14 to 6. It was only 2 to 1. That's two shifts over. Hold on. Let's see. 6 still gets me a 2. Okay. Um, I want to keep the strong unit. So I guess I'll kill this and put it over here. It is possible for me to rebuild it, I think, using reorg points. Uh, make sure, but... And where the hell's this attack? It's here. What about my helicopter for return to base? I want to take care of that now. Um, there's no reason that I shouldn't. There's not going to be another attack on that hex. I got to get out of that hex. I don't know if I take a casualty. I don't think I do. Helicopters take no, uh, no hits in this case. And I will fly back to here, I guess, and base there. So that's one of my attacks out of the way. I'll do the rest and come back. As notable, two hits and a... Uh, I hope I'm not cheating. Uh, and a retreat. Well, there was only one unit there. It's in the dead pile. The helicopter stays there. Did I cheat with the helicopter? <sighs> Gotta go look that up. I think I'm allowed to bring helicopters into forest and jungle, but I'm not positive. <laughs> the, and it was the basing, the rebasing that had me worried. Looking up the rules on the particulars of uh, the two mission types, um, in both cases that a combat, that an attack helicopter can perform, uh, the helicopter is allowed to stay. It doesn't have any, uh, any regard to the terrain type. Which makes sense, but there's something <laughs> that's confused. Oh, I know what it is. It's paratroops and helicopter landings, um, uh, helicopter assaults, which some of them are only, uh, some of, at least some of them are only clear and rough terrain. And again, you know, I'm just trying to grasp these things in my head while I'm going, but it's really hard to keep track. So now I got the big pile uh, to cope with. And what do I got? I got one attack here and one attack there. None of them across a river. Excellent. For the last combat, let's, well, last two combats. This one, I succeeded in getting in, forced the units to retreat. They have to all retreat together. Uh, two hexes, got an advance into Emily or whatever it is, Danley. And I mark that and grab a victory point for it. Hey, we've done something. <laughs> okay, over here, I've got a base of two to one against that. I ended up with a plus two modifier for the air uh, support. And then one shift against me, one in favor for the engineer, and then uh, one more in favor, which puts the current marker here, for armor in reasonable terrain. <laughs> Forests are still reasonable, apparently. So I've got a plus two to the die roll over there, and I'll just roll this. And there's nothing. Ugh. And I get a three. We column that over, and we get a one and a retreat. So these guys are going to have to back out of there. And that's putting Tigosigapa, you know, open. Uh, but can I hold the line there, you know? Jeez. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to lose my my air uh, center but I'm losing ground here um if I retreat to here I'm providing some defensive support I'm going to make it harder to attack to Golsiapa so I think I'm going to keep uh, my position instead of taking uh, double losses which would have been another step I Honduras doesn't have a big military um, I can't hold out against the Nicaraguan army me to the reserve movement. I don't have a whole hell of a lot here. I got a couple of armored reserve stacks. I think those are all tanks. Um, the idea being, hey, maybe I can slip behind here. I'm not going to be able to cut him out of supply. He's got a supply source there. Uh, but they might be able to cause some problems. Maybe. I think that's the best I can do. Um, and also moving things towards the front so that they can launch an attack somewhere from a better position. 
massive breakthrough happening. Um, I pushed a unit here because the river, no road there. Uh, I brought another one up here. Just these are locations I could have been in before, but I'm strengthening my line um, and in, in places where advances maybe happened or whatever. Here in particular, I was able to push um, an armored unit in. That makes that a less attractive place for Honduras to attack if Honduras had any attack in them, uh, which they don't. I think that's it for that. Insurgency disbandment. I would like to disband my damaged insurgency. This is, again, one of the tricks of the, of the trade. Um, something took hits. Let's reclaim the points. Uh, so that's going to be rough. That is, I think, outside of my home country, so I don't get the bonus there. It's not a placement. Um, so on a 4, 5, or 6, I do. And... I get this back, but more important, well, equally importantly, I get the command point back that was used to create it, so now it can recover. Yeah. It's this kind of painful recycling issue. Helicopter transport, wait, what? Huh, okay. Uh, oh, this was a helicopter assault, that's an air mission. Helicopter transport would allow me to transport helicopters safely. I think I want to do that, return to base. Let's look at my hexes. So here, I return to base, I slip over. The other one I've already taken care of. Demolitions, no. Repairs, no. They're both in the game. And then my reinforcements. And let's see how many aerial planes I get. I'm over here on the preparedness four table. I will get seven of my ten planes arranged for this turn, and this is going to be painful. Um, there are some that are clearly less valuable than others. I'll throw them out. That's not a hard problem. The hard problem is where the hell they show up. And they don't have to fly in. They don't get intercepted or anything like that. And again, without the U.S. on the board, they're not going to get intercepted. <laughs> but they are able to slip in freely, which feels a little weird to me, given that the U.S., when they bring their planes in, they are subject uh, to normal rules for that. Halfway through turn one, starting with the Allied phase. Now the Allies are going to have a whole lot less to do, I think, because <laughs> they're not on the offensive. Um, you know, coordinating the offensive, figuring out how to deal with the air, and yeah, we got lots more planes up there. A lot of, like, uh, MiG-27s, I think. Um, some other resources as well. Uh, actual Soviet Union planes in there to uh, to bolster my air attacks. Uh, we lost, I don't know, I think we lost MiG-23 off the die roll, whatever. We got an extra EW. This is stuff we're going to need if the U.S. comes in, which they're going to. It's stuff that we probably don't need to deal with what's on the board, but... <laughs> um, so... You know, taking a look at, hey, it took you like a day to play half a turn. Yeah. Um, but, and, and that feels horrible compared to like the little scenarios I was playing. Although the one big one with lots of air units would have been the same kind of shit. Because it's, it's handling the air interactions that's the hardest part of the game. Yes, I had to figure out, you know, what I can attack and everything. But honestly, the biggest pain in the butt was the air uh, interactions. And once you start taking casualties on the planes, that goes down, right? <laughs> we'll see. Um, I mean, so far we haven't seen any air-to-air -air combat. All, we, all we've taken is a hit on a helicopter. Um, so what does... You know, how, how does this compare with other things because of it? I mean, think about something like Vietnam, uh, where, you know, any of the non-campaign scenarios are moderate-sized. But once you get to the grand campaign, uh, it would take me weeks to get through a turn sometimes. It should. It should take about a day or two. Um, this should not take a day to get through that turn. But, again, my... Oh, I don't even know what to call it. Uh, my intolerance for, uh, for, for dealing with the, the complexity of the air and other rules here was enough to just make me kind of shy away more heavily than I would like to.
All right. Let's see how far we can push through the Allied uh, player turn at this point. Supplies. Look things over. Everything is in supply still. Uh, oh, I forgot an attack down here. Let's make this one. Hold on. That was kind of, that's actually kind of painful. I took a stop loss, but I've got to take a retreat. Um, that means if I want to hold Liberia, I need to take another stop loss. Or I could start falling back towards this Costa Rican location. Uh, see, the thing is, Liberia is in better, um, better condition. Uh, it, it, well, first of all, it's a town. So I get a bonus from that. And secondly, it is rough terrain. So I think it's better to try to hold there. We don't want to be caught out of supply. So we'll we'll take the hits. I mean, Costa Rica is a waste. It really is. And we also had an attack up here, didn't we? To the Rita one in the forest with an insurgent. No. Nothing too exciting going on, but I just forgot about these suckers. The insurgent gives me a plus one. Nothing complicated, no retreat before combat, nothing interesting like that. Uh, which feels like, you know, an insurgent unit at least should have some capability. And that's one in a retreat. Uh, our supply source is here, but we have to retreat two hexes. So we'll do so, and these combine and move into there. And we're really trying to destroy Arda. I think we've got a chance of doing that. Um, much harder job to destroy FDN. But again, if we win in Honduras, you know, if the U.S. just ignores things, it's going to happen. Um, which is really the thing. The Sandinistas have a lot more power. All right, let's jump uh, back to here. Ground unit reorganization. Um, so, damaged units that are on the board really probably don't want to reorganize. This guy might, except he'll get his reorganization dinged off him. Um, you know, they'll be attacked and they'll lose it. And no good there. Uh, so, given how hard it is to reorg units while you're under attack, it's much easier to pull things back from, um, you know, your front lines if you're attacking. Now, I have to say, it might be possible, and there might be some Honduran damaged units that I could pull back, but I can't have them on the front line and reorganizing. I am going to spend my six, and that'll be uh, allied reorg points. I hope I get more. And these guys go three turns into the future. Oh, let's throw them there. You know, I mean, what am I going to use my points for? I've got to recover my army as much as possible. That's expensive for kind of crappy units, but it's what Honduras has, right? Okay. Uh, guerrilla attacks, I don't think we have any. We're not really uh, making any movement there. And to the regular ground unit movement. And here, the objective is to delay and make things as good as possible look at the intervention roll, see about the U.S. carriers. I'm pretty sure they come in in the reinforcement phase, if I call them in. For ground units, largely on the defensive with the Allies, pulling back with uh, Honduras, um, pulling back with Arda here a little bit. I don't know what it's going to do me, but uh, the Mesquite Indians, I can't find a good place to put them. They're kind of in the most defensible terrain they can be in, I think. Um, I, don't know. I don't think swamps are particularly good. Um, just personal opinion there, right? Let's see. Let's take a look. Yeah, there's no uh, no defensive benefit for a swamp. Um, I'm moving the FDN forward a little bit, but I'm not trying to engage too hard uh, with them. They're not in great shape yet. Um, I need to get a big insurgency going to start causing problems to the Nicaraguans. Get enough pieces on the board that I'm causing them difficulty. Like I said, Honduras pulling back. El Salvador, though. Wow. Um, trying to destroy one of those entrenchments. Uh, this is one of the things, is that 
I've got enough time to at least begin reducing their capabilities. And that's why they're all stacked together. Oh, what else? Okay, let's do the insurgency movement. I've actually moved some of my insurgency forces already. I had to get some special forces out of there. If I have much uh, or anything else. When it comes to insurgency placement, this is going to take more thinking than I have energy for at this point. Because... So here's the thing. Anywhere I place my insurgency units, Sandinistas can move planes in to interdict them. They don't have a whole hell of a lot left. They've used a lot of their air power. Or it just came on the map. This might be the best turn to do it. <sighs> to throw down a lot of insurgents. But... And, and it probably is. Um, I can build insurgents, possibly. I don't know if I have anything that I can build. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that can show up there. I think everything that I build can be counterinsurgencyed, um, except for things like these special forces units uh, that I have. Um, which are primarily all Salvadorian death squads, probably. <laughs> Nasty shit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, those I'm going to want to place. Uh, and I can place those under air uh, cover, which means, yeah, I could try to interdict them, but interdicting them could cause a problem. One of the bonuses to building them, although it's in a zone of control and that causes penalties, is I could actually, uh, there's some use for me uh, attacking uh, that fortification there. Now, I believe El Salvador and Honduras can't work together. They don't really like each other. And Honduras isn't allowed to attack these things or something like that. That's fine. And they're not allowed to attack Honduras. <laughs> you know? Uh... They don't want to look it up, because <laughs> I'm tired of looking things up. But, yeah. Alright. I think it's Betty by time soon. Which blew off a whole day uh, avoiding playing. And I'm not sure I'm going to right away. Anyway, um, one of the issues... I've kind of fudged the insurgency, counterinsurgency situation. Um, officially, you place them all on the board and then the counterinsurgencies are triggered. That's not how I've been doing it, and that's actually wrong. But the problem is, uh, you have to kind of do something, maybe position your counters or whatever, um, tilting them, I'd say, uh, so that you can remember where the potential counterinsurgency um, attacks can be made. Because it only works against the units that were just placed. And, you know, with the small scenarios uh, where I fudged it anyway, <laughs> that's kind of problematic. But, uh, but it becomes much, much harsher when you're looking at, uh, you know, something where the whole map is really covered. So I tend to do it with okay, I'm placing an insurgent, okay, I'll counter it. Much like I do with the air uh, movements. I want to make sure I'm not doing it right before <laughs> I grump too much more. Uh, it's supposed to be done fully sequentially. I just don't see that as being uh, a reasonable way to handle things, to tell you the truth. So I'm just going to continue with what I've been doing, cheating. But honestly, I think it captures some of the flavor of the game. The you know, the same way the air units are a, okay, I push this forward, you're going to do something about that? All right, you let that one go by, how about this one? You know? Uh, and I think that nature is just fine. I don't think that there's anything particularly simulated by having these in two separate segments, and it makes it a whole hell of a lot easier to play, uh, to merge them. Anyway, I'm going to start trying to move some pieces. So uh, in this case, I'll put the El Salvadorian... Uh, special forces and whatnot into place. The reason being, hey, I get a big bonus and I'm making an attack. Of course, the one that I do put in will be in uh, a zone of control, which reduces the chances. And then we'll see what I, where I go. There's a lot more of these than there are planes. And 
this might be this I think is the turn to do it if there is any because uh, the FSLN is going to have a lot more in terms of air power next turn they just flew a bunch of planes on the board there's actually no penalty to zone of control the only penalty is I shoved these guys out into the uh, jungle mountain with the artillery there that would have been the place I would want to um, have placed them but hey it's too far back to go back in terms of time if I adjust on it fine enough I have basically no counterinsurgency capability in my air force I have two 1Bs and that's it that's available I don't know yeah I had some decent bombers that I used up on uh, other stuff um again I needed the close air support so what this means is that the counterinsurgency is essentially uh, with impunity the only thing that I have to worry about is maybe attack helicopters so if I'm within range of this and I think that's the only attack helicopter that's available on the board uh, it cannot combine nope. <laughs> it's got a 1A but it can only deliver two points I need one more point I don't have another point except through the air unit and I can't do a combined air mission at the very least, because I'm too far away from the airport. Uh, actually, no, I'm not, because I'm in EW range. Shit. Okay, I'm going to have to look to see if helicopters and planes can combine on a counterinsurgency mission. Because that could impact things. Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> I've placed a few, and those are not going to get touched. Uh, because they're not in range of the helicopter can't combine air units and helicopters so I've got kind of free placement within the placement instructions and that basically means what uh, from here over for the FDN and the others I've already taken my shots out there's the FDN ones and you can see quite a, a spread I've still got a whole pile left that I haven't used and a whole bunch of points left that I haven't used but <laughs> Uh, each unit can only create one insurgency unit. Insurgency units can create more insurgency units, so very quickly this is going to get, you know, into an intolerable situation for uh, the Sandinistas over in that area. They're, they're just going to be facing a lot of uh, problems. And no counterinsurgency, no disbandment, obviously. Do I have any air missions um, for the U.S. side? well for the Allied side and that's a tough call because I have planes that could do bombardment missions there's not a whole hell of a lot actually it's not that tough a call I have planes that can do bombardment missions there's not much that the Sandinistas can do outside this zone until I start you know I can expand my, my radius not not the radius of that, but I can throw like an E to, if I get uh, to Gulsagapa or something, get the airport and fix it. <laughs> um, I can turn that into like a little EW center, and then if there's additional airports near there, uh, I can uh, I can coordinate stuff and have a reasonable air force that can operate in this general area. But again, it's only a three hex area, so yeah, there's nothing. I'm not going to ever have the kind of air cover that I have in central uh, Nicaragua. So, since I'm on the offensive, um, bombing the enemy makes sense. I'm on the defensive right now. <laughs> Get my hats confused a little bit. Bombing planes, uh, bombing units is not a very effective thing to do and I knew this before I started doing it. Uh, you really want to use your bombardments for other things uh, which is why I have a close air support there but I'm not making any other attacks uh, even though I've got all these ins uh, insurrection units or insurgency units sorry uh, in place they're just not strong enough to take on the units they had. So I throw a, a few bombardments. This unit didn't have any air defense. It's one of the few units on the front um, where I'm outside the Messiah range. So like the Cubans automatically have air defense. Uh, this thing, it's another Cuban, it has air defense. But um, 
my other things are stacked together. They're units that provide air defense if they're stacked. So uh, that was my one little vulnerable piece. And boom, I tried to hit it and didn't get any result. And I concentrated the rest of the firepower. That was actually El Salvadorian planes. They can operate in favor of Honduras like that. They just can't coordinate with it, Honduras. So I can go bomb Nicaraguans uh, without any problem. And I used um, my Honduran planes to attack over here. Why? Because I don't want to risk my Air Force <laughs> against counter air. Eh, it's not that likely. But, you know, it's as likely as the damage to the units, and, and anyway, I clustered together 10-point uh, attacks where I could, and managed to get a hit, and that's the net effect of my Air Force. <laughs> so, we go to ground combat. Uh, we got one fight. Not quite. That's important because I actually need that strength point, but yeah, I want to do that as well. Okay, so our initial was three to one. We got many column shifts there, and we canceled out all the defenders' terrain and, uh, and other benefit. Well, not terrain, but the entrenchment, insurgent, etc. benefits with the benefits we have. So, we just roll a die. And it doesn't look like a terrible table, right? Six, uh, that's pretty good. We're gonna do two hits to them. The retreat can be ignored because of the fortification. Reserve movement, no insurgency, disbandment, return to base. Uh, I've already kind of taken care of that with the helicopter I moved. Uh, demolitions, repair, reinforcements. There's no allied reinforcements this turn. We come to the end of turn stage and things recuperate is basically what happens here. Uh, net that happened this turn, well, the Nicaraguans gained uh, one important location. I'm not sure where it is. I've got it written down. Is this airstrip? Yeah. Not really an airstrip, but it's that that town. That's the one thing that I gained of any value with an airstrip on it. And we're in place to make, you know, significant inroads into Honduras. We saw the big F uh, DN placement here. Arda is looking fairly healthy. Uh, El Salvador. I mean, you know, they throw their whole army against one stack of insurgents and they kill a unit. Right. Um, obviously, if you were playing just the El Salvador Civil War, uh, if this was the situation, El Salvador would have uh, a pretty good chance of dealing with it eventually. I don't remember what the net effect of that scenario are. I didn't want to play it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's a small little corner of the map that is going to be a big problem when Nicaragua gets through there. And that's about it. We're going to load this sucker up, but first, you know, I flip some counters or whatever. Uh, i got to look up the U.S. intervention rules because I want to bring U.S. troops, the U.S. Uh, carrier groups in. So what I think happens, as best as I can figure it, is I make a U.S. intervention increase, and that is going to be... A voluntary increase, that's going to be on table B. If I can find it. Which may increase world tensions. Uh, dee, 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 dee. That'll be... I need a 4, 5, or 6 to increase tensions. I get an increase in tension, which I did not want. But um, that doesn't give me my reinforcements yet. My reinforcements become available on my next reinforcement phase, and I'll set those aside and mention them. Uh, I'm going to have to find them in the, in the book. And here are the reinforcing units. Uh, we've got two U.S. Air Force groups in 
and I'll show you what they got in them. Uh, EF111 and A10, a couple F15s, a couple F16s, an AC130 for whatever the hell that's useful to, an AWACS and an EW. This one doesn't come in with an AWACS. Now, if I go up to level two, some more come in. Now, I'm making up the rules here about when they come in, okay? Normally, a game starts with the US at a particular intervention level, and you're not supposed to add to it, but the... Scenario generation allows you to add to it, but it doesn't specify. So the question is, does this just appear on turn one when it's slated to appear, or uh, does it come one turn after I declare uh, my situation? Well, I think it would have to come in one turn after because my, uh, uh, my intervention level wasn't high enough this turn, so it couldn't have come in during the reinforcement stage this turn. But then the question is, well, does everything get shifted by one turn? And again, I think that makes sense, but again, I'm making shit up. That's the end of turn one. Yay! Um, and this is about as exciting as the game is. You're doing a lot of stuff. And it's kind of like Flashpoint Golan in this. You're doing a lot of stuff and not getting too much impact out of it. Uh, you might be able to say the same thing about the OCS. I don't know. Uh, the insurgency side of things? Yeah. Maybe it's because of how I play because I hate insurgencies. <laughs> I don't know. But it feels like it's pretty bland. Okay, and except for where it just becomes an absolute headache to figure out which units are attacking where, like that clusterfuck that happened during the end of the Somoza scenario, eh, they're just fighting the war like everything else, you know? They're not slipping away and hiding or anything like that. Yeah, they can slide through zones of control, but how big a deal is that? I don't know. It just, it, it feels more like the air power and the capabilities of inserting units is the bigger deal. But even that, I'm like, well, we gotta get air superiority somewhere first. <laughs> and right now, air superiority is on the Nicaraguan side, but that's eh, gonna swing pretty fast. And, you know, I'm not really willing to attrition things off. Uh, I'm also cautious by nature. All right, so let's send this up right now. We're at one big victory point. And, and like I said, you know, I mean, when I'm trying to say, look how exciting it is, <laughs> in my sarcastic sort of way, um, yeah, what I really mean is, you know, I, I'm just not getting that much out of this. I'm not getting much more out of the play of this very, very uh, detailed and complicated game as I would out of, you know, one of the old Avalon Hill classics. <sighs> uh, all these rules, all the concepts in them, all the detail, you know, it had me spooching when I was 13 years old, jacking off about this game, but then when I'd actually play it, I'd be like, eh, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I felt that way about most modern games, um, including most World War II ones, but that's a different matter. But yeah, I mean, you know, I, I would set up like the Central Front series, and I would get kind of a similar feeling, you know? I felt like I was, I had a whole bunch of rules and a whole bunch of uh, systems in play and everything that just weren't giving me that much, uh, which I feel is different from OCS. I feel like I do really get something out of the OCS moving the supplies around, which is a very finicky mechanical type thing, uh, but it just feels right having to shift those supplies. That feels like a major factor as opposed to like, hmm, I got a road trace, uh, which is, you know, kind of the focus of most World War II games. Yeah, if I can trace supplies, yeah, I can make as many attacks as I want. That limitation is a big deal in the OCO. So here, what's the limitation? Uh, I can pretty much move all my units and do shit with them. Maybe the air power? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it just feels like I'm moving a lot of stuff, and yeah, I'm kind of blundering along with it. And I'm not sure if the game changes, you know. But there's people who claim to love it, so I don't know. Up it goes. <laughs>